I am back and I want to say thank you to everyone that has been watching the videos even though I haven't been uploading huge shout out to you and I'll do a little bit of a longer thank you at the end and talk about some other things but for this video really small idea the idea is to add controller support for multiple player characters without duplicating input actions or duplicating the script uh, so I'll show you this player moving uh, the the little plane just flies left and right right now, and that's that's one player, right? So you could have a single player game where you have a single ship. But if I wanted to make this a local multiplayer game, where I have two controllers or a keyboard and a controller, however you want to set it up, I need a way to listen to the inputs for the second player without also hearing the inputs for the first player. So what you'll find is that a lot of people will say, "Oh, just go into the." The input map and you know define all these actions like fly right fly left and define it for each player but that's super annoying because what if i want to eventually have eight players you know what if there's going to be eight ships on the screen i don't want to define eight sets of actions and then you know come up with another action like oh eventually i want to add a dash to all of the planes well now i got to add a dash to all of these separate controllers that's just kind of ridiculous. And maybe I don't fully understand the best way to go about adding these actions. Who knows? But I think I found a better way. And that's just to ignore the actions themselves and kind of go straight into the uh, the Joy-Con buttons, like the actual gamepad button input actions. Uh, so what you would typically do is you would say if input is action pressed or just pressed or whatever and then you would use your define action but there's a function that you can use called input dot is joy button pressed and what that function lets you do we can actually look at the documentation real quick uh, it actually lets you define the device that you're listening to and the button and that's exactly what i want i want to say okay i'm listening for this device this button because we can do all of that programmatically we don't need to define any of that um, so just looking at the script, this is the player script that I have right now. We'll go kind of top to bottom since I'm skipping around. The first thing that I'm doing is I'm making sure that I will have a way to define what player this is. And you can call that player index or device index. It doesn't really matter because we're going to use it for the device. Um, so index zero basically saying this is player one. Uh, input velocity speed, that's just for the movement. This is just kind of a basic movement setup. Uh, I define my own lerp function because who knows? I don't know why I do that, but there it is. And I just use that to, to change rotation. The rest of it's very boilerplate. We just start off with uh, completely zero input velocity. When the player presses either the right or left button, we uh, set a velocity and then we react to that velocity later where we update the position. And then this rotation stuff is just for style so that when the, when the ship is moving left and right, it rotates a little bit. Um, but everything that's really happening is happening with these is joy button pressed calls where we're sending that player index for the device and we're also specifying the button that is being pressed. Now there is documentation that you can look at for all of these buttons, but in my opinion, it's almost useless because it just says joy button two equals two gamepad button two. I don't, I, I have no idea what any of that means. So what I recommend and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to add the Y direction. We're going to add up and down to the ship just to show you. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to copy this and just move it down. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how I find out more information about those gamepad buttons. And, and basically what I do is I go back to the input map and I try to add the button that I want. So it's going to be a joy button. And then when you look at this list, it tells you all those button numbers, but it also tells you what they are, which is so much more useful than the documentation. So what I was doing before is left and right, and now what I want to do is go up and down. So 12 and 13. So D-pad up uh, would be 12, D-pad down would be 13. So here we can just focus on the Y. So if Y is plus one, that's going to be down, which I think was, was 13. And then 12 should be up. And then we can ignore the rotation stuff when we're going up and down. And then here, I think what we can do is instead uh, do this, input velocity plus equals input velocity times speed. I don't know. We'll try that. So now I can go left and right, and I can go up and down. So we just added that, and it was so easy to just you know look in the input map and find. Oh, I, I wasn't looking. I don't know where I went off screen. 
So all of this information about adding uh, buttons for the gamepad are really cool, but the real power of the way that this is set up with the is joy button pressed uh, function is that it will very easily allow us to add player characters quickly. So player one is set up with the script. All I have to do is duplicate it. Where is duplicate? So now I duplicate it. I have player two right here. It has the same sprite, so I'm just going to go into my assets where I'm using some stuff from Kenny. Uh, to change the sprite. And then the other important thing to remember is that we set that player index. And this is what's actually being used to check for the device. So you can either change it in the script or I'm exporting it. So we can change it right here in the editor and set that to one. And now this blue ship and red ship should be controlled by different controllers. You can't really see my setup. Maybe I'll put a picture, but I do have two uh, DualShock controllers right here. So now hopefully... Yeah, so there's one, he's moving around, and then I can grab the other controller and move that one separately. And they can kind of move around and go over the island, whatever. So, super cool, right? Super powerful. And now the script doesn't have to have this crazy branching logic around checking the devices and checking for uh, all these manually defined inputs. And everything's clean and nice, and I love it. It's, it's really well kind of pre-optimized. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, again, longer thank you at the end. Thank you for watching. Uh, 4,000 plus subscribers. Pretty cool, especially considering I don't really upload anymore. And uh, there's just been a lot of stuff going on. And I changed jobs and officially moved to a different state in the U.S. And, and all these different things. So, um, yeah. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for being patient with the channel. And I, I hope people are still gaining a lot of value from it. Definitely still working on some of my game dev projects uh, occasionally. Looking forward to getting more back into it and uh, lots of exciting things to come. I don't know. It's a long life and there's so many things to do and couldn't be more excited to do all of it. So again, thank you. Everybody's amazing and I hope everyone is well and safe and healthy and uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.